Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss otitis media in the ENT series. As you all know that otitis media mainly presents with ear pain. So let's first of all discuss the differentials of ear pain. So there are mainly two differentials of ear pain. One is otitis externa and one is otitis media. Now otitis media can be acute or chronic. Uh, chronic otitis media is also mostly due to cholestatoma. So it's also called as cholestatoma. So today we are mainly going to discuss acute otitis media. As I already told you that acute otitis media presents with ear pain. So when you are going to take the history, the first question that you are going to ask is, um, which in which ear do you feel the pain and what about the other ear? Okay. The next question should be more of a general question. You should ask, can you please tell me a bit more about it? As it is a pain symptom, so the next thing that you are going to ask is Socrates, that is site, onset, corrector, radiation, aggravating, and relieving factor of the pain. Okay. After this, you are going to ask about any fever. Okay. If the patient tells you that, yes, uh, he has fever, which is usually a common thing with otitis media, then you should also explore fever a little bit. Since when do you have the fever? You will do odipara for the fever. Okay. All right, so uh, after this, you should ask cardinal symptom of ear disease. As I already told you in a previous video, there are six cardinal symptom of ear disease, which is ear pain. Number one is ear pain. Number second is ear discharge. Third is hearing problem. Fourth is tinnitus or ringing in the ear. Fifth is numbness in the face. And sixth is weakness in the face. And whenever you get one of these problems, whenever a patient presents with one of these symptoms, you should also ask about the rest of the symptoms to exclude different ear diseases okay uh then as the patient present with ear pain you should rule out ear trauma you should ask that have you hurt your ear recently you should also ask about recent ear travel to rule out um tympanic membrane perforation or barrow trauma you should also ask about any swimming recently because swimming is a risk factor for otitis externa okay so you should ask these questions and this should conclude your history of presenting illness after this, you should ask about um, past medical history, which will include uh, if this whether this condition has occurred previously and how was his, how was it treated if it occurred previously. And then you should also ask about history of any other medical conditions, especially any uh, respiratory tract condition, any recent flu, recent viral illnesses, and cystic fibrosis. Okay, because cystic fibrosis is a condition that predisposes to otitis media. And then you should ask about maftosa. Um, medication, allergies, family history. Uh, if it is a child presenting with otitis media, no need to ask about family history of otitis media. What you should ask is if anybody at home is smoking. Okay. If it is a child, then no need to ask about, you know, occupational history and who lives at home. You should ask about uh, developmental history instead. Okay. All right. So examination. In examination, you should uh, verbalize vitals. You should verbalize that I'm going to examine with your ear, uh, examine your ear with a special instrument with skull otoscope. I'm going to do some special test for your hearing and balance. Okay. So if this is otitis media, then the positive findings will be redness over the right ear drum. Okay. Now, how are you going to explain it to the patient? Simply, it's an infection of the middle ear. So you will tell you will tell uh, the patient that I suspect that you have an infection in the middle part of your ear, and this is called as otitis media. Regarding management, um, there is no specific investigation needed. You can do routine investigation, routine blood tests that include CBC, LFTs, RFTs, urea, and electrolytes. Uh, regarding treatment, symptomatic treatment is pain relief. So you will give paracetamol and also painkiller uh, air drops, air drops containing painkillers or local anesthetics. Specific treatment is antibiotic, but you should not anti offer antibiotic to everyone with otitis media because... In most of the cases, otitis media is viral. So if the patient symptoms are of three days duration, that is the patient presents to you on the fourth day of the symptom. When you ask in the history, it tells you, doctor, I'm having pain since last four, four days. Then you should start antibiotic. Or if the patient present on day two, then you should initially give paracetamol and ask him if the symptoms do not get better. After three days, then please come back. And we will start you on antibiotic. At the same time, explain that most of the ear infections are because of viruses. And antibiotic do not work against viruses. So it will not cause any difference in the recovery period. And, uh, no and won't cause any difference in symptoms as well, including pain. As we are, always, uh, as we are already giving you pain relief medication for the pain. 
so antibiotic won't be probably useful okay so you only give antibiotics under these four conditions either the ear infection is uh, more than three days in duration or there is ear discharge ear discharge means that it is a uh, bacterial infection and if the child is less than two years with infection in both years okay or if the patient is immunocompromised or cystic fibrosis patient, then you will give antibiotics under these four conditions only. You should also give general advice to the patient. General advice should be don't insert anything in the ear. And while you are taking a bath, uh, please protect your ear so that water or shampoo doesn't enter it. Okay. Um, safety netting should be for meningitis. So tell the patient that if your symptom worsen or you experience severe headache or fits, then Call triple nine and go to the emergency department. So this was all about acute otitis media. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next video soon.